Good morning to everyone watching us live. On behalf of the management of St. Joseph's School CBSE, I welcome you to our webinar on the relevance of Ignatian insights to our context. This webinar is organized keeping in mind the Feast of St. Ignatius celebrated on the 31st of July. I request you to please remain on mute throughout our session. There is a Q&A section where you can ask your questions. Please fill out the feedback form in order to get an e-certificate. The link for the form will be posted in the Q&A section shortly. We will now invoke the Almighty's blessings through a prayer. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify and thank Thee your name. You have showered us with so much blessings and your presence continuously. Remind us of your faithfulness and guidance. We humbly ask you to share our speaker today, Reverend Father Josie G. Mello SJ, of your greatest inspiration so that he may share the most of his knowledge heart and soul to the main topic of today. We may also absorb the invaluable knowledge experiences and put it into practice what we may learn today. St. Ignatius envisioned the whole world as his mission field. We therefore ask for his grace that we may transcend narrow paraclysm and think and feel globally, though we may have to labor locally. May he also inspire us to carry out our mission vigorously to engage ourselves in this crucial struggle of our time, the struggle for faith and that struggle for justice, which it includes. Your infinite blessings would mean the success of this webinar. May we be living witness of your genuine love through the enactment of knowledge acquired through this activity. 
We ask this in your holy name. Amen. I thank the school choir and Miss Rani for invoking God's blessings. I call upon Miss Purnima to give the welcome address. A very good morning, one and all. We have virtually gathered this morning to enlighten ourselves about the importance of Ignatian spirituality in the present context through this webinar, which has been organized by St. Joseph School, CBSE. On this momentous occasion, it gives me immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Reverend Father Josie DeMello, a professor of Ignatian spirituality who will be facilitating the webinar this morning. I heartily welcome Reverend Father Joseph Rodriguez, the Rector of St. Joseph's Indian Institutions, and Reverend Father Rohan D. Almeida, the Principal of St. Joseph's School, CBSE. A warm welcome to the principals, institutional heads, and vice principals of various Jesuit institutions who are with us today. I also extend a warm welcome to the members of the staff of KJES, BJES, MJES, NKJES, BJES, HJES, and CNF and CE who are participating in this webinar from various parts of our state. A special welcome to the fathers and brothers of Inigo Southern community. Guests, our well wishes who are taking part in this webinar to gain furthermore insights on the relevance of Ignatian spirituality in today's context. Before we proceed, I request Reverend Father Rohan D. Almeida to introduce Reverend Father Josie DiMello, the resource person of today's session, to the participants. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our guest speaker of the day, Father Joseph Di uh, Anthony DiMello, who is going to talk to us about the relevance of Ignatian insights to our present context. Before introducing him, I would like to introduce the topic of the day. Dear friends, we are in a difficult time. We are in a crisis and in a chaos of COVID-19. When we look at the history, we have seen how Jesuits have responded to the different challenges faced by humanity, be it be a plague, be it be, it be a spiritual crisis in the church, be it be a thirst for discovery, be it be a political crisis, be it be a conflict between the nations, be it be a struggle of the tribals, poor, struggles of the women and children, migrants, refugees, crisis between nations, Jesuits have responded to every crisis and struggles of humanity through the help of Ignatian insight. As I know that Jesuits have succeeded to respond to every crisis situation, mainly because of Ignatian spirituality. Contemplation of Ignatius in which he asks us to see God gazing into the world and respond creatively with compassion and love. Secondly, Ignatius asks us to contemplate God working, laboring in the universe. Can we see today's situation and the context in the eyes of God and respond? Can we see God working tirelessly for the entire universe? Can we labor with God to ease the situation in which we are living in today? These are questions that we need to ask. Today we are in a chaos and we are in a rainbow of chaos. Chaos breeds creativity. Chaos destroys familiar. It is a bedrock that moves us forward creatively into the future. We have new possibilities. How do we creatively respond to the present situation creatively? We have been responding creatively to this situation in different ways. 
we have the alumni of our in, uh, Jesuit institutions across Karnataka and across the state uh, in, uh, across India responding creatively. They have reached out more than five lakhs migrants. We have our dedicated teachers and lecturers of our institutions creatively responding to today's situation, moving from a physical space to the digital space in the field of education. When I thought of this uh, webinar for our staff, only for St. Joseph uh, School CBSC, I shared my interest with other Jesuits of Karnataka and they told, uh, told me that they also wanted to participate in this webinar mainly because of the resource person in Father Joseph Anthony Dimillo, who is fondly known as uh, Josse Dimillo. He joined the Society of Jesus in 1988 and he was ordained in 2001 and he has been a person who has been inspiring many young Jesuits into Ignatian spirituality. He has completed his master's and doctorate, doctorate studies in spiritual theology from the University of Comillas, Madrid, Spain. From then he has been a force to reckon with in Ignatian spirituality. He was the program director and coordinator of Prerana Ignatian Spirituality Center, Bangalore. Then he was the coordinator of master's program in Ignatian spirituality at Jnana Deepa Vidya Peet, Pune for several years. He was the secretary for the commission of Ignatian charism in South Asia for six years. At present, he, has, he is serving as a assistant to the provincial of Karnataka since January 2019. For the Jussi Dimello, he is not only intellectually deep in Ignatian spirituality, but also spiritually. For the Jesse has been a resource person, not only nationally, but also internationally. He has been the member of JESCOL, the team which trained many of our staff and faculty members of our various institutions of Karnataka. He has been a spiritual guide to many. He has also given many psycho-spiritual talks some of them are well known even today in uh, YouTube. I am very happy to welcome him and uh, int introduce him because he has been a great support and inspiration for me personally. I have experienced his uh, great support in the spiritual realm. We are very happy to have him as a resource person of the day. For the Jossi will be addressing on the topic relevance of Ignatian insights in our present context. So he'll be speaking for 45 minutes and after that he'll be answering the questions which are posted in Q&A section. Then we will be winding up this webinar. So a warm welcome to Father Joseph Anthony Dimello, and uh, I request him to address us and enlighten us today. Thank you, Father Rohan. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Father Rohan, for your words of welcome. Initially, you asked me to address only the CBSC school staff, but now we have a larger family, an extended family. Uh, entire Karnataka uh, Jesuit institutions are involved in this whole uh, reflection. So let me begin my presentation. I have the PPT with me. Dear friends, this is my topic, relevance of Ignatian insights to our context. And my presentation has two parts. In the first part, I'll be talking to you about our context, context of the pandemic. And in the second part, I would like to touch upon five Ignatian insights relevant for us today, keeping in mind the context in which we live. So let me begin my presentation. First of all, we are in the context of the Corona pandemic. What do we notice, dear friends? An invisible virus has shattered our dreams. 
that's what we feel at this moment an invisible virus has taken us to the world of uncertainty we cannot plan anything most of us planned our summer program this year but we were in lockdown during the summer vacation and this corona pandemic has threatened us and there is a sense of feeling of fear feeling of anxiety feeling of uncertainty the second aspect is about the fragility of human life so far we thought we are the masters of this creation but today what do we notice we are fragile we are vulnerable we do not know what holds for us we do not know our future till last month we spoke about the corona virus in other countries today it is at our doorsteps and we realize we are fragile we are vulnerable the third one is the context of the migrants there is a tussle between life and livelihood and you are quite familiar with these images the migrants returning to their home they are saying we want to go home and they are they are on their journey on their journey of returning to their hometown to their homeland and many of them have lost jobs many of them are living in hunger and this is created by the invisible virus the fourth element is we are living in a new normal today we use these words like physical distancing sanitization lockdown etc we are living in this world and today we are in this uh, virtual world because of the corona virus online teaching and learning today we want to cover the syllabus we want to give a certificate to our students but questions are being raised by many educationists what about mentoring the students what about their holistic formation and today even the education system is in danger when i say education system i mean forming our students to become men and women for others and the sixth one i would like to add i have not put here this corona pandemic has taught us to work together work in collaboration so many jesuit institutions people of goodwill so many ngos have worked together we have learned what it means to collaborate in one another and we have experienced the strength of it and this is what we have learned through this corona pandemic hope i am audible are you with me okay now let me connect it to the person of ignatius just now we have seen the context now i want to look into the person of ignatius and i want to take five ignatian insights and i'm sure they are very much relevant to our context today friends we know ignatius of loyola lived basically in the 16th century he was born in 1491 and died in 1556 he he was born in spain i am not going to tell you the history of the life of saint ignatius so what strikes me when i look at the person of ignatius first of all i would say ignatius was a seeker a seeker in search of meaning who is a seeker a seeker is a person who has a quest for god who has a thirst for the divine and i notice in ignatius this thirst this quest for the divine he was a man in search of meaning let me explain this point you are familiar with this name victor frankl born in 1905 and died in 1997 he was from austria 
He is known as the father of logotherapy. In his book titled Man's Search for Meaning, he has this quotation. I have modified this quotation. If you have a why in your life, you will live anyhow. If you have a why, W-H-Y, in your life, you will live anyhow. During this pandemic, during this context, many speakers have made a reference to Viktor Frankl. Today, people are questioning the meaning of life. Let us look at the person of Ignatius. Up to the age of 30, Ignatius was trapped in the web of worldly ambition, careerism, pleasure and power. And for Ignatius, this was the meaning of his life. And to get power, to get pleasure, to, be, to get uh, name and fame, he was ready to go to any extent because that gave him meaning. And something happened in the year 1520. It was a turning point in his life. It was a battle between the Spanish, some of the kingdoms with the Navarra and the French soldiers. And the enemies in a way destroy the dreams, shatter the dreams of Ignatius. His leg is shattered, his leg is wounded. Cannonball hit his leg and his leg is wounded. All his dreams were shattered. He thought everything is over for me. And at that moment, he was reading two books. Though he wanted to read books on chivalry and romance, because that was his worldview. Since those books were not available, as he was convalescing, he began to read the life of Christ and lives of saints. And as he was reading these books, dear friends, the another perspective is open. The earthly perspective of power and careerism is almost shut. Now he's open to another worldview, the divine worldview. And hence, there is a shift in his life, a shift from self to God, the other. This is a shift we notice. From an earthly perspective, there is an eternal perspective. He thought everything is over, but God says, no, I have some other plan for you. And this is what people have shared during these days. Some people thought everything is over, but when we think of God, when we say God is with us, he is also opening another door for us. And for Ignatius, dear friends, he realized another world is possible. The world of wars, the world of name and fame, yes, that is one world, but now another world is possible. And that is the world of peace, forgiveness and service. I want to underline service. It is a world of service where I think of the other, where the other becomes important. And so to help my neighbors, that becomes his motto. My neighbor takes prominence and by serving my neighbor, I serve my God. And somehow this became the catchword for him to help my neighbors. And he was passionate about this dream. He was passionate about this meaning. And here the focus is on the other. In our contemporary world, we say his goal was higher than self. And today, what is the motto of our educational institutions? We tell our students, ultimately, they have to be men and women for others. This is the goal. And we see this a transition in the life of Ignatius, a seeker in search of meaning. After the age of 30 years, from 1520 onwards, this became his meaning, this gave him meaning. And therefore, this was the why of his life. And he said, if this why is there, I will live anyhow, because that gives me meaning. I would like to present before you two points for reflection. Dear friends, have I noticed a shift in my life from self-centeredness to other-centeredness? What is my perspective today? 
in my teaching, in my family life, in my society? Do I hold on to the earthly perspective or also there is a divine perspective, divine perspective of service, divine perspective of forgiveness? The second question would be, how do my colleagues look at me? Most of us are teaching and serving in our colleges, in our schools. How do my colleagues look at me? Do they say I'm an other-centered person or a self-centered person? As we celebrate the Feast of Ignatius, it's a time for us to introspect the way we live because Corona pandemic has altered our way of life, altered our way of thinking, altered our way of living. The second point. <clears throat> I would look at Ignatius as a seeker in search of his inner world. A seeker in search of his inner world. Up to the age of 30, once again, I make a reference to the age of 30. From being a man lost in outward excitement, stimulation, pleasure and activity, Ignatius became a man of deep thought, reflection and self-evaluation. Up to the age of 30, Ignatius somehow focused on his external appearance. Therefore, when his leg was shattered, he was totally broken because from then on, he had to limp. He was not able to walk properly and that will affect his external appearance. But after reading those books, something happens to him. He is introduced into the inner world. Friends, we are good at external exploration, but we are very poor in interior exploration. And during this time of pandemic, when we were in lockdown, many people have spoken about it. We need to look into our inner world. And that's why I want to highlight this aspect, not only during lockdown, but also even now, this point is very relevant for us, for us today. So Ignatius learned to become aware of what was going on within him. What was going on within him? What was the world within? The world of his thoughts, feelings, and inner stirrings. Thoughts, feelings, and inner stirrings. He became aware that there is another world within me. And it's a very complex world. He was keen on conquering the external world as a, as a, as a soldier. But now he realizes, I need to conquer this inner world. I need to be receptive, open to this inner world. And now he began to, he learned to sift the growth producing inner movements from the destructive ones. He realized there are interior movements, some are growth producing, but at the same time, there are some interior movements, they are destructive ones. So here the word comes sift. What is this sifting? I'm sure you have seen in the construction site, people sift the sand from stones. And it talks about, Ignatius talks about sifting our interior movements. We need to sift our thoughts. We need to sift our feelings. I will give you some ex examples later on. So he tells us, pay attention to your inner world. And I'm inviting you, just become aware, dear friends, what is going on within you at this moment? What are my thoughts as I'm amidst this pandemic, as I'm preparing myself for the Feast of Ignatius? What are my thoughts now? What are my feelings? Some of you might be having positive thought because we are preparing for the Feast of Ignatius and we have this webinar and I can learn something about it. But some of you also may be having certain negative thoughts. Why is this webinar? Today is a Saturday. It's a weekend. We can relax. 
So you have positive thoughts and then you have sometimes, most of the time, positive feelings. And you have a negative thought, why is all this? And you can also get irritated, you may be angry, so feelings are negative. And good to become aware. It is not only within me, but also I need to become aware of the feeling of my family, my classroom. What is the feeling? What is the interior movement of my students in the classroom? What is the interior movement of my family? <clears throat> when I say certain things, how do they take it? Do they see it in a positive way? Do they see it in a negative way? What are they going through? So basically, I want to highlight here, what kind of environment am I having within me? Is there a toxic environment? If my mind is filled with negative thoughts, if my, if my interior world is filled with another invisible virus called hatred, jealousy, pride, most probably I'm living in a toxic, in a toxic environment. And today it is good for us to become aware of this inner world. And so we need to process this inner world. Often we just neglect this inner world. We are so much caught up with the external world. We must process this inner world. I need to see what am I feeling. First of all, what are my thoughts? What am I feeling? We need to process. Because it offers an insight into my life. If my thought is predominantly negative today, it says something about my life today. If my feeling is positive, it says something about my life today. St. Ignatius told us the interior movements, your feelings, your feelings, that is the language of God. If you feel happy, that's a language of God. God is telling you something. If you are angry, if you have jealousy, God is telling you something. That is the language of God. And Ignatius began to process this language of God. And we must not forget friends. In the world impels us to act. When I get angry, I want to shout at somebody. I have already acted upon that feeling. When I'm happy, when I'm happy with my children, I begin to love them. I begin to serve them. That inner feeling, a positive feeling, impels me to do something positive towards my family. And so we must be careful. We need to pay attention to our inner world. So points for reflection here. Are you aware of your inner world? Are you you're caught up only with the external world, world of appearances? Secondly, is there a healthy environment within you or a toxic environment? Also, friends, check the environment in your family today. Your children, your spouse, your siblings, how do they look at you? What are they going through at this moment? Is there a tug of war that is going on or you feel a close bond? You also check among your colleagues, what do they feel about you? What thoughts they have about you? Is there a toxic environment? And if in the college you notice that, you pick up. In your classroom also, you pick up the toxic environment. The third point is about in search of a pedagogy. Ignatius was a seeker. A seeker in search of a pedagogy. In simple words, pedagogy means a method. A method. Some of you might be familiar with the, with the history of the Society of Jesus. The history of the Jesuits. And if you look at in the 16th century, the Jesuit schools introduced Paris method. It was called Parisian method. You may be wondering, why is this Parisian method? You know, Ignatius and his companions, they studied in the University of Paris. And during that time, during their studies, they picked up something new. When they were in Italy, they noticed there was some other method. There was no order in the curriculum, in the teaching education system. And this Paris method has a perspective. 
as an order, as a system. And this is what Jesuits introduced in their schools. That's why many of the church leaders, kings and queens, like, like this Parisian method or what we call Paris method. And one of the insights of this Paris method, what we call today Ignatian pedagogy, is this. There is a process. And I see a close connection between what I shared just now, becoming aware of the inner world and what I'm presenting in this third point. So what is this whole method? This method consists of experience. You know, when you have an experience, that experience elicits certain feelings. That experience also will have certain thoughts. And Ignatius tells us we need to reflect over these experiences. Reflection is very important. He offers us a reflective pedagogy. And based on this reflection, we need to act. And after acting upon this experience, we need to evaluate this entire experience. So experience, reflection, action and evaluation. I don't want to touch upon the evaluation part, but I want to touch upon the reflection part. That is what is highlighted by Parisian method. For Ignatius, reflection is the key. It was the key to his philosophy of life. And therefore, he used to tell the Jesuits, take a break at the end in the morning after your work, just before your lunch, and what we call examination of conscience. We also call it consciousness examine. He also tells us before going to bed, take a break, revisit your life, review your life. And today it is not only for religious, it's not only for priests. I think it is important for all of us. Socrates said, a great Greek philosopher, Socrates said, unexamined life is not worth living. We need to constantly evaluate our life. We need to reflect over our life. And so Ignatius gives us this worldview, review the day. And the pandemic is a time for us to review our life. Today, many of us say there is something called before the pandemic and after the pandemic. Before the pandemic, we were living in one way. Today, we talk about the new normal. And it is in this context, we need to examine our life. What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? Where we have gone wrong? And so Ignatius would ask us, how did you begin your day? If you're in a classroom setup, ask yourself, how did I begin my class today? Did I prepare for my class? Secondly, how did you end your day? With a positive note or a negative note? How did I end my day? How did I end my class? With the positive notes, positive note, or with a negative note. What was your uppermost feeling during the day? During the class, what was I feeling? When I came to the staff room, what was my uppermost feeling? I feel like entering into the classroom or I felt like running away from the classroom. There are some students, our youth, they say, I don't want to go home. I feel like running away from home. What could be the uppermost feeling? Some of the students say, I feel like going back to my family. Staying in the school is a nightmare for me. When I look at teacher X, teacher B, teacher C, they are like dictators. I feel like running away from the school. So we need to also get in touch. We need to get in touch with the inner world of our students. And we need to examine, in other words, we need to review our work, the way we go about we also need to review what were my predominant, predominant thoughts during the day. Did I take any decision under the influence of sadness? Some of us get very angry. They say anger at the tip of my nose. And I get angry and I shout at people. I use abusive language. Most probably, I have made certain decisions I have acted upon based on or under the influence of my sadness, of my anger. And in that way, I can say we are promoting culture of death, not culture of life. And so reflection or review is the core of our Jesuit education. 
And today we need to teach this also to our students. And that's why we emphasize on holistic formation. Our students, yes, they need to get a degree. They need to have qualification, but also they need to learn about this. And there are some insights here. Ignatius tells us never make any decision when you are too low or too high. When you are too low, you are very angry, you are very sad, don't make any decision. You see some of the students who commit suicide. Today many youngsters are committing suicide. Many businessmen are committing suicide. They are under the influence of sadness. And Ignatius tells us, don't take a decision at that time because you are very subjective. On the other hand, don't make a decision when you are too high, when you are in a honeymoon period, they say. When you are in the honeymoon period, everything looks very beautiful. You say, you are the apple of my eye. But on the following day, the reality strikes. Whom you call the apple of your eye, you see the reality. Then you feel like running away from that person. So don't make any decisions when you are too high or too low. Be very objective in your decisions. So take time, in other words, reflect, reflect. In terms of, am I making a life promoting choice or a life destroying choice? Robin Sharma in one of his books says, the quality of life depends on the quality of choices you make. The quality of life depends on the quality of choices you make. If today you have, you're leading a qualitative life, it means you have made qualitative choices. Today, if you are making choices that are destructive, that means you have been used to that kind of life. Therefore, the quality of life depends on the quality of choices you make. Look at you, look at yourself as a teacher. Am I leading a qualitative life? Sorry, am I leading a qualitative life? And how do we lead a qualitative life? We here, our choices should be governed by the spirit of more. You might have heard this word majis. What is majis? Majis indicates the spirit of more. What more can I do? That's what happened to the Jesuit institutions and to many other institutions during the pandemic. We did not think of, uh, we did not think about ourselves. Yes, it was time of lockdown. We thought about others, what more we can do to the society, what more we can do to the migrants, what more we can do to the marginalized. And therefore, we promoted culture of life. And today, similar things should happen in our families, in our classroom, in our education institutions. We should be governed by the principle of more. Points for reflection, dear friends. Am I leading a qualitative life? Do I have the habit of reviewing my daily life? These two questions are very important, friends, for all of us. I move on to my fourth point. Ignatius was a seeker, a seeker in search of integration. What do I mean by integration? Today we talk about, we say, we need to walk the talk. You practice what you preach. What you preach, what I preach, I need to practice. There's a sense of integration that is needed in our life. And especially as teachers, we need to have a sense of integration. We need to be integrated persons. All of you know, Ignatius studied in Paris. And he was in Paris from 1528 to 1535. And during this time, he was captured by that new worldview, the eternal worldview. And he began to share his insight, his vision with his friends, his vision of helping the neighbor. And he spoke, to, spoke about this vision to his friends. And he gathered 10 companions in Paris to the work of helping neighbors. Remember, they are studying in the university and he was able to gather 10 friends. 
who said, let us be partners in this, in this mission. Let us be partners in this noble venture. And so he got 10 friends, 10 companions. And what do they emphasize, these 10 friends? Since they were coming from the University of Paris, they emphasized on academic excellence. Everybody looked at them as intellectual giants. On the other hand, there was a dimension of the heart. They had a special love for the poor. Ignatius of Loyola told his companions, as university professors, as educationists, people will look up to you. That can fill you with sense of pride. But be careful, beware. You must also look at the poor. You must go and visit the, the slums, the hospices, where people are there dying. You must go and be with them. You must dig the graves of people. In other words, don't forget about being other-centered. Don't, don't forget about being with the poor. You need to be with the poor because they are also our educators. They are also our formators. When we live with them, we know what it means to live a difficult life, what it means to face a crisis. But the poor people take crisis as an opportunity. They hold on to God. And this is what Ignatius taught them, to have a blend of head and heart. And not only head and heart, he also told them, you need to go and work. You must dirty your hands, soil your hands, working in the hospitals. So there was an integration of head, heart and hands. Today in our institutions, we talk about holistic formation. During the lockdown, some of our students joined, joined the Jesuits, joined the collaborators, joined the alumni in this noble venture. And this is an integration of head, heart and hands. In other words, friends, we need to have a personal transformation. That is not enough. I can say personal transformation, personal realization, but I can sit in my room and say, no, okay, poor people are there. But that must lead to social transformation. I need to think of the society today. There are unjust structures in my society. I need to work towards it. I need to think about the migrants, what is happening to them, and I must be proactive. So personal transformation is not enough. It must lead me to social transformation. And in this context, Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change that you want. If as a teacher, you expect your students to be good, first of all, you need to be good. You need to be faithful. You need to be loyal. So be the change that you want. Walk the talk. The last point, Ignatius, a seeker in search of the divine. Ignatius, a seeker in search of the divine. What is the core question here? Friends, today many are asking this question. We are going through a crisis moment. Our dreams are shattered. People are dying. And we do not know what is our future. Where is God in all this? Ignatius had a similar question during his time. Let us see how he responded. During his time, people felt, people thought, to experience God, we need to run away from the world. Because they considered world is bad, matter is bad, material world is bad. So they said, if you want to experience God, we need to go to a desert. We need to leave everything. We must renounce everything. We must renounce the world, renounce our family and live in the desert. And in the desert, we experience God. But Ignatius brought a paradigm shift in this worldview. He said, to experience God, you should not go to the desert. You need to go to the world. It is in the world God is present. And we need to find that God there in that world. Divine is present everywhere. This is the perspective of Ignatius. God is working in the world. He is laboring in the world. And therefore, every work becomes divine. So for us, teaching is a divine experience. And for Ignatius, since we started education institutions, he considered this education as a divine activity. This itself is worship. 
Worship doesn't mean we need to go to the temple, we need to go to the mosque, we need to go to the churches. Yes, on the one hand, that is worship, but also another worship. When I take care of my family, when I'm happy in my family, when I take care of my students, when I take care of the poor, when I pray for them, not in the temple, but in my family, that also is a divine experience. So today, the challenge for us is to find God in our family, in our classrooms, in the streets, among the beggars, among the migrants. And so we need to do our work with utmost dedication. We must do our work with bhakti. And when we do our work with utmost dedication, without seeking for any reward, without seeking for name and fame, in such activity, we find God. We find the divine. Today, in the context of the pandemic, we need to find God in the context of the suffering, in the context of the suffering. And so God tells us, yes, I'm here in the midst of suffering. I'm walking, I'm journeying with these people. And he's inviting us to co-labor with him in transforming the world. And that's what, once again, I want to repeat. All that we did from our Jesuit institutions, with our collaborators, with our alumni, with our students, with our parents, co-laboring. We became partners with God. God invited us and we all said, yes, we want to be partners with you in this whole vision of transforming the world, in the vision of helping our neighbors. And therefore we have seen, that's what I have highlighted here, I mentioned here, Jesuit institutions have co-labored with God in mitigating the suffering. And this is my last point, friends. And to conclude, I have two questions. Have I found God in my family? Have I find, found God in my workplace among my students? What hinders me from finding the divine in my life? What hinders me today <clears throat> from finding the divine in my life? Perhaps my self-centeredness, my jealousy, my pride, maybe that is hindering me in finding God in my family, in my workplace. And when I'm other-centered, when I'm God-centered, I'll be able to find God in everything. I want to add one more aspect. Today, the pandemic has taught us to have a new vision. When I say God is every way, we see everything is interconnected. It is not a fragmented reality. It is, a not, it is not a world of disintegration. But we see there is a beautiful integration. What is this integration? God, human and cosmos. God, human and cosmos. All these are interconnected. And it is in this reality we find God. And this is the vision also we carry forward in our education institutions. And therefore, friends, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you my insights. Happy feast to all of you. Happy feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And my desire and my prayer is the following. Let us be seekers like Ignatius of Loyola, wherever we are. God bless you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, we now have questions that have already come up. Few of them have personally emailed it, uh, sent across it to me. So I've posted it and I've published it. Um, uh, would you be willing to take those questions, Father? Uh, you're not audible. Yeah. Where can I see those questions? Um, shall I read? You, you. Oh, sure, sure. You can read, yeah. How is Ignatian theology different from Catholic theology in today's scenario? Could you repeat once again? How is Ignatian theology different from the Catholic theology? Ignatian? 
Ignatian theology. Theology, okay. Yeah. Different from the Catholic theology. Am I audible? Yes, Shall I continue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, I basically talk about the Christian theology. Christian theology basically coming from the Gospels. And uh, the theology is this. Ignatius always said, there is, uh, first of all, there is no difference between Ignatian uh, theology and Christian theology. No, we are followers of Christ. And uh, in the Gospels, we notice Jesus went to reach out to the poor. Jesus looked at the world and he has one perspective. I should not exclude anybody. It was a spirituality of inclusiveness. And I would say this is the spirituality. God became human. That's what we say when say Jesus became human. Jesus was born in a particular place. God became human. That's what we celebrate in Christmas. And today we are called because we are followers of Christ. We need to enter into the reality of the poor, the marginalized. And what we are doing through our educational institutions, we are entering into the world of the students. And what is the driving force? Driving force is love. We need to be compassionate. We need to be caring. And uh, we need to be all inclusive in our approach. This is what I would like to share with you. And when it comes to Christian theology, there are different groups. They may have a different perspective. But this is what I derive from a Christian theology. And this is very much connected and uh, uh, connected to Ignatian theology, Ignatian worldview. You can take the next question. Thank you, Father. Uh, one of them have commented this case about the feedback from the case. How far it would help as no one wants to be your, your mic is not very clear for me. Uh, can I ask the moderator to mute Father Tosi for a minute? Should I mute? No. Yeah, just for a minute when I'm oh. talking. Is it, am I audible now, Father? Yeah. Um, one of the comments and questions is about the feedback from colleagues. How far it would help as most of the time no one wants to be blunt and straight about things, but it's always pleasing. What would be your suggestion, Father? You'll have to unmute yourself. OK. Yeah, thanks for this question. Many people ask this question. Uh, you no, know, we have this uh, peer group feedback. I don't know what term you use it. Uh, now, when it comes to a peer group, yeah, sometimes uh, some of them could be very blunt also, but it all depends how do I take it. But at the same time, what I want to tell you is don't rely too much on the feedback of others. What Ignatius tells us is have an insight into your own life. When I say, when I rely totally on the other, when people just uh, uh, flatter me and I take it that as a positive thing, I think that person lacks reflection. What in... Uh, in the, in, the, in the terminology, common terminology, we call it jnana, an insight into my life. And Ignatius tells us when you are in touch with your inner world, you have an insight into your life. What is predominant? What are the predominant thoughts? If I have a predominant negative thought about a particular colleague, I know something is wrong with me. My colleague need not give me a feedback. And secondly, if there is a feedback, and I need to just gauge, okay, if most of them have given a negative feedback on certain things, I think that may be true. That may be true. But more than that, I need I would say I need to be responsible and say, you know, what are what what are the predominant thoughts with whom I find difficult to relate? And when people give me the feedback, one thing just now I said, if many are giving me negative feedback about a particular point, I think there is a ray of truth. And if most of them are not given, one or two are given only, then I must check it. Okay, it may be true, may not be true. Let me reflect over it. So much depends on me. Much depends on me. And I would say, accept it willingly. Don't reject any feedback. But then you see it, you process it, and you check it. I would put the emphasis on processing. Thank you, Father. You'll have to mute while I'm reading the question. Um, 
how jesuits have made a difference in the human history during the crisis situations this question was asked anonymously to my whatsapp so i've sent it across how jesuits have made a difference in the human history during the crisis situation you'll have to unmute oh, yeah, yeah 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 i was going through a crisis when uh, you asked that question so <laughs> See, when we look at the life of Ignatius, he lived in an era of crisis. There was a crisis in the church. You know, many people were not happy with the church leaders, the theology that the church had, the way they were understanding life. Many people left the church. It was a time of crisis. And we know a time of crisis could be very threatening. We feel like running away from it. But it's also an opportunity for us. And I would say Ignatius considered that as an opportunity to show greater loyalty to the church, to the church leaders. That is Ignatius. And today, how do we see it? This is, uh, no, I don't want to say we have done it, but we're trying our best. The corona pandemic also is a time of crisis. And as a time of crisis, we can just be inward looking. We tend to be inward looking when there is crisis. But I feel not only Jesuits, lots of people, people of other religions, people of goodwill, people who believe that there is a meaning in serving others. I think people have rose to the occasion and they have helped the other. And this is what I see from our Jesuit institutions. And if you want to speak something about Jesuits, if I have to say something about Jesuits, our Jesuit conference of South Asia that covers all the provinces in India, including Karnataka, no, we have a we have started the whole movement for the migrants. We for migrants. If you go to Google and put we for migrants, you come across the Jesuit uh, whole uh, uh, project towards the migrants. So I think Jesuits have done something during the time of crisis. And this is what Ignatius perspective also. When you are in time of crisis, you just somehow hold on to God. When you hold on to God, you know there is hope, and somehow you can respond to that situation. And this is what we learned from Ignatius. And I've given you one example, and that may be several examples. Uh, right now, I'm not able to recall, but this is what I see. Uh, not only Jesuits, many other people at the time of crisis, I think they have responded positively. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, the next question is, as teachers, how can we study Ignatian spirituality? Are there any online courses available for this? Thanks for this question. Uh, first of all, you can contact uh, the Jesuits who are there in your campus, in your institutions. They can uh, know, give you some links. There are many links. Uh, there is one link called ignatianspirituality.com, if I'm not mistaken, and through which you can learn so much about uh, the Ignatian spirituality. That is one way of doing it. But we do not have, we are not yet begun any online courses as such, online courses. But I'm sure this uh, era of pandemic, this time of pandemic has invited us to think differently, to go to, go to a virtual world. And uh, maybe we have to think about it. Even uh, here in Karnataka, we can think about it. Many are interested. Some have already written to me and shown their interest. So it's a good question. I also ask our Jesuits also to, to be proactive in this whole venture. So otherwise, there is one uh, uh, no, online uh, site. You get many, but one good site is ignatianspirituality.com. And you get a lot of information about Ignatian spirituality. Thank you. Um. How could I, as a teacher, play a role of integral formation of my students during this pandemic where we are missing virtual only during class hours or through social media? Specifically, how do I implement Ignatian principle cura personis, pers personalis in present situation? Yeah, I think the person who has asked this question knows something about the Ignatian spirituality. 
because very fact the person has used this uh, cura personalis that is taking care of persons uh, i would say that person uh, knows something about uh, ignition spirituality now answering the question uh, see in the classroom setup okay all of us are preoccupied uh, by covering the portion we need to cover the portion but in the classroom first of all can i say something need not about ignition spirituality as such but values of life what i have shared with you just now those five insights they are very much connected to life they also we find that also in other religions in other spiritualities in buddhism i see a lot of similarities in hinduism also i have not done much study on islam but uh, i see a lot of similarities so can i share something about this in the classroom i have 45 minutes and just 2 minutes can i give for this that is one way of doing mentoring the work of mentoring not only teaching but mentoring other one is if i come across some students who are weak who are very poor you no know, can i also get in touch with them can i call them maybe it may you no know, i may have to spend maybe in a week maybe 30 minutes i need not call every day that student if i identify 10 students and i say this week i call those 10 students maybe after 10 days or 15 days i'll call once again so if i talk about cura personalis taking care of the students the persons i think i need also uh, uh, need to go out of my way no i need to have the spirit of majis what more can i do sometimes we have a tendency what more can i get from the institutions what more can i get from others but here what more can i do for the institution especially more than the institution for the students and in that way the way they look at me i can be an inspiring figure they may not say anything now but after few years once they are out of our institution they'd say that teacher that professor has made a difference in my life he has taught me through his or her life not only in the classroom so i would say kura personal is we need to emphasize and we are doing we have counseling sessions but the only counseling session is not important it is not only the role of the counselors even the teachers even the management all of us need to work together because ours is a holistic formation thank you um online education requires devices which are expensive and the poor do not have the environment to learn as well how do we make ignition way of teaching reach the poor yeah thanks for this question uh, friends we have been reflecting over this uh, this concern in the uh, in the recent past we have been reflecting over this concern you know today um, some of our institutions are in the cities and even in the cities we do get students from rural areas and some of them have got real difficulties and uh, you know our jesuits who are there and also the other collaborators all of you are also thinking about it i know i do not mention the institution some of some of the institutions already thinking about having a cell in the rural areas and to help out reach out to students and this is what i say we need to be proactive no we can't expect only the management to think about it we need to also think together discuss together you no know, offer suggestions then uh, you no know, uh, that means it becomes a concern of everybody and so today this has been the concern and we need to always be proactive in this how to reach out to the poor because we can't say uh, out of 80 students 75 students are attending my classes but five poor students are not attending i think the five poor are important and somehow we need to see that they are not excluded just because of the uh, gadgets so it is not very easy i know but at the same time i think all of us should make uh, uh, earnest effort to reach out to the poor and this is also is about uh, our way of going the jesuit way of going Uh, no we don't want to exclude anybody just because there is no money uh, just because they have a difficulty to to access the internet or to get this uh, the devices thank you uh the next question father uh some people work only to please the principal what is your suggestion for them yeah it's a good question i don't have any suggestion 
if people please the principal the one second i say there is lack of reflection in these people and ultimately they are uh, what do you call oh, they have some kind of duplicity in their life because when they please in front of the principal they'll be talking one language and in front of others they'll be talking another language and in that way they are doing a big harm big harm to everybody so if somebody thinks that he or she has got this uh, difficulty pleasing i think it is better we rectify it and uh, at times what happens the whole world speaks about it but i do not know about it because i have the habit of pleasing everybody so i need to be straight forward certain things i am not happy i need i should be able to say these things and once again here i invite you to have that review of life you know what was my whole predominant feeling today and maybe i met a met principal i met a met uh, people you no know, was there a duplicity in my life in front of somebody i speak one language and in front of somebody else i speak entirely opposite language so uh, no it will uh, first of all we need to have greater awareness greater awareness of this first of all person should become aware and if you have received this feedback take it positively work on that then also see how to overcome this maybe every day you say today at least today i will speak what i feel i will speak that to my principal what i go through what i feel about the issue i share as it is i don't want to you no know, uh, no put it in a you no know, in a in a different language what i feel i communicate so i would say you no know, this pleasing uh, character it may do a big harm to the person first of all to the person himself or herself and to the management sometimes also the other staff and sometimes to the institution also thank you uh, how can we find what is god's will for us thanks for this question it's a difficult question and i feel i am uh, you know attending on exam people are asking me questions and i am answering your questions so today i am uh, now i am becoming a student uh, yeah friends to to understand god's will there are uh, certain st steps we need to follow first of all i need to ask myself you know sometimes instead of putting god's will and all that you no know, this whole perspective of other centeredness do i want to be a person of other centeredness in my life do i have that desire or all the time i think of only my 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 every sentence begins with i i i that means i did this i was the one who did this i spoke to the principal so there are some people you come across all the time they speak i i i they don't want to listen to others and therefore if they want to do god's will i think there should be a shift from this from i to we from self to the other secondly to do to to do god's will to find what is god's will for me there should be a moment of recollection and reflection a reflection about my life what is what has been the pattern of my life in my pattern what kind of choices am i making am i reflective in my choices or i make arbitrary decisions what i like i make so for such a person it may be difficult to do what is god's will to do god's will and that person may say god's will is my will only what i do is god's will no i think that may not be the right way so secondly you need to reflect and you need to ask for that grace third one is you need to have that inner freedom i need to have that inner freedom today no i no i i am in the school and one student is coming and asking me two students are asking me teacher could you stay tomorrow to teach us okay i would say as a teacher okay i you know i want to do i want to go home today i don't want to stay back but then in the spirit of mo i need to say okay maybe here god is calling me god is calling me to help these poor students and i would say that is maybe god's will the selfish will will be i want to rush i want to go back okay in case there is a real serious uh, issue in the family my presence is needed that's fine but otherwise okay somebody is asking a weak student is asking teacher could you help me and if i opt for that i think i am doing god's will what god wants me to do in other words if god were to be here what kind of choice he would have made if god were to be here what kind of choice he would have made what are the choices of god god's choices are service god's choices are forgiveness god's choices are charity i think this compassion all these choices 
So for this, therefore, do I have a desire to move out of my self-centeredness to other-centeredness? Do I have the ability to reflect? Do I have the courage to do this? There are some teachers, they don't have the courage. No, 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 I don't want to help because if I help today this student, tomorrow another student will come. Therefore, let me not do anything. Then I'm doing only my will, what I want. So this is how I would describe in simple words, but it's a long uh, topic to speak about you know, how to do God's will. This is what I'm trying to explain to in simple words. Thank you. Uh, the next question, Father. How can we as teachers make use of Ignatian insights into our family? Yeah, these five insights which I've shared with you, they are very relevant to a family setting. So you just recall, I have uh, you know, time and again raised those questions. You know, at the end, I had some points for reflection. <clears throat> they are all connected either to your family or to your workplace. You see the first one, the search for meaning. What gives me meaning in my family? What is the focus in my family life? Family or something else? For some people, family is not the focus. They are busy with so many other things. Sometimes business becomes their focus, not family. So Ignition Insight is if family is the focus, then that gives me meaning. I give my whole self to my family. Then secondly, also in the family, I need to think about the larger society. I have a larger family, maybe the family of the poor, the family of my students, the students, because I teach. So do I have also openness towards them? Secondly, being in touch with the inner world, very important. Some of us act in a childish way in our families. Some of the parents, the words that they use, the way they react. And I think they need to be in touch with the inner world. The third one is the process of reflection. Do I have reflection in my whole approach, in my work, in my family? Do I have a moment for pause? Do I look at my life? Do I process my inner experiences? The fourth one is, the: am I a person of integration? As a family member, I may be talking about do this, do that. But what about me? I say something to my children, no, you need to love others, you need to forgive. But I don't forgive. I say hell with you. I don't care. So if I have such kind of language, such kind of attitude, then I think I need to be a person of integration. The last one is, where do I find God? Yes, we need to find God in the temple, mosque and the churches. But to the pandemic has taught us all these places were shut. We need to find God first and foremost in our families. God is present in my, in, in my spouse, in my children, in my siblings. And I need to find God there. And I need to be open to serve them. And there are difficult moments I need to serve them. If there are difficulties, pain, suffering, even in that moment I need to find God and I need to serve them. Once again, I'm repeating the same thing, what I said. That's all. The next question, Father, is can you elaborate on how Jesuits have responded to COVID-19 in the world today, apart from India? Yeah, it is a very, you know, uh, it's a long answer I need to give for this. Jesuits have been very proactive. I can take just one example of uh, Afghanistan, what Jesuits have done uh, for the, the refugees, Afghan refugees. And Jesuits have been working there among the refugees. It's a very difficult terrain to work. A lot of uh, threat is there from various groups. But Jesuits have been very proactive, proactive during this pandemic. And all over the world, uh, Jesuits have also been proactive by sending videos, organizing prayer services because it is not only giving the taking care of the material need but also the psychological and spiritual need and uh, yeah material help so many jesuits have done in different uh, areas but also we have been proactive providing them the spiritual and uh, uh, mid, uh, spiritual and psychological assistance you know people have been uh, busy with the online programs online uh, uh, counseling sessions so like that i feel Jesuits have been very, very proactive, not only in India, but all over the world. I cannot go into details due to lack of time. How many questions more? Uh, we have more questions. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Father Rohan, is it okay? I continue with the questions. Uh, I think we can take three questions. Okay. 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 Fine. We can take some more questions. Uh, the next question um, is from a teacher. She's again sent it to me to my uh, personal uh, WhatsApp. All are talking about reaching out to the poor and the migrant and so on. What about the teachers? We too are going through mental pressure because of this online classes and the spread of virus on the other hand. During this time of critical crisis, whom should we approach and how can I have a balanced mind? Yeah, first of all, this is an important concern. This is an important concern. We talk about reaching out to others, but first of all, we need to take care of ourselves. And I know some of you have a lot of difficulties in your families. Uh, also, there is a stress. One thing about the pandemic, other one also, some of us are not techno savvy or not very good uh, adept with this kind of uh, uh, digital world. And uh, no, there is a tension, there is a pressure. One thing is when you go through a pressure, tension, share it with somebody. You can share it with your principal or you have rectors or basically first you can talk to your principal if you feel comfortable with the principal or you know somebody in the college, talk to that person, one of your colleagues. So you can share with them, don't you know, keep it to yourself because by worrying, you're going to lose your health, you're going to lose your peace of mind. So share it with somebody and uh, no, okay, in the college, in the school, you know, you can share it with somebody, but then you have to take the initiative. No, we can't tell you, please come and share. You have some problems. Each one has to take initiative, come and share. And uh, or you go to other sites, you know, today people are available online to guide people. But if you know somebody, if they are reliable, you can also share with them. And I would say that is important. So first you handle this. Secondly, no, there is no point in uh, getting frightened. We press the panic button. I think that is uh, that should not be done. Yes, we have to live with this virus and let us be optimistic. When you are pessimistic, when you are frightened, I think then uh, you lose the battle. You live in the, uh, no, in the stressful world. Therefore, today we must say, okay, henceforth we need to live with this virus and that is part of our life and let's face life. I think that should be the whole tone of life. Be optimistic. And then somehow you radiate that. You communicate that message to others. Others, if a family member, uh, your family, your children, uh, other people in the family, they also get frightened. Somehow you communicate that. If you're a head of a family, you tell them, let us be positive, let us be optimistic. That's what you can do in the family. At the same time, also talking to somebody. And I would say you can talk to the principal or one of your colleagues or also the heads of the institutions also, the rector or somebody. Thank you. Uh, the next question, Father, why St. Ignatius refers in his autobiography as pilgrim? Uh, there is another similar question, if I may read that as well. Uh, why Ignatius is pilgrim? In number 15 of the autobiography, Ignatius first time uses the word pilgrim. And there are different uh, uh, interpretations given. But I would say this way. When you read the autobiography of Ignatius, you notice there is an external journey. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. There's an external journey, a pilgrimage. He's moving from one place to another place. And you know, the whole perspective is he wanted to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holy land where Jesus was uh, you know, born and uh, he, he died. Uh, sorry, he, he, no, he went through the passion, then he died there, then the resurrection, all this. This is a life story of Jesus. And Ignatius wanted to go there as a pilgrim. There is an external pilgrimage. But I, what I would emphasize is the internal pilgrimage, the interior pilgrimage. A pilgrimage from self-centeredness to other-centeredness. And therefore, Ignatius called himself a pilgrim. And in some of his letters, when he signed, he also wrote as a 
Ignatius the pilgrim. So somehow these things somehow indicate that Ignatius wanted to call himself as a pilgrim. And who is a pilgrim? Pilgrim, you have seen people going to Shabarimale, people going to Velankani, people going to Mecca and all this. As pilgrims, they want to experience God. They have a thirst for God. I said seeker. They have a quest for the divine. And they rely on the providence of God. So I think Ignatius' life was that actually. And that's why he calls himself as a pilgrim. Once again, I want to emphasize it is not only an external pilgrimage, rather it's an interior pilgrimage. Thank you. Uh, there is one last question, Father, but before that, I would also like to read out certain uh, very encouraging, positive comments that a lot of people have, a few of them have uh, sent us. Um, thank you, Father Josie. It was a it was a good and informative session. Uh, thank you, Father Josie. It was a good and informative session. Uh, somebody has said it's a very informative session and we would like to have the same thing in our SJI uh, PUC. Uh, and they've asked for your contact details. It is, it's a beautiful session. Thank you. Uh, if it is possible to send the recorded copy of the entire session, somebody wants a recorded copy of this. Respected uh, sir, this is from SJIC PUC. We also wanted to create a webinar like this. Can you get your, can I get your contact details, email or phone number? Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll just take another one question further. At present, how many Jesuits are there in the world and in India and how many Jesuit institutions in India? I don't have very good memory. Hello. I don't have very good memory. Uh, in the world today, we are nearly 16,000 Jesuits and in the world around 4,000 Jesuits. About the Jesuit institutions in India, I am not able to give because I am not an educationist. I am not in the field of education. So you can ask for the Rohan or your principals because they are in the field of education. You need to ask the right person. Otherwise, also I can tell you today we live in a virtual world. You can also go to our JCS website, Jesuit conference in South Asia. There you will get all the details. Okay. Any more questions? We almost answered most of the questions. Um, can you go on mute? Yeah, uh, I just want to remind you all again, please do not, uh, please don't forget to fill the feedback form. All those who fill the feedback form will be getting an e-certificate um, in a day or two. I request Ms. Sheba to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Sheila. Teach us, Lord, to give and not to count the cost. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. We thank God Almighty for keeping us safe and seek his continued blessings on all the participants of this webinar. I extend a heartfelt appreciation and gratitude to today's speaker, Reverend Father Josie DeMello, for being such an engaging and motivating speaker and for patiently answering all our questions. You have us convinced, Father, that just as out of the tragedy of a cannonball injury and a painful convalescence, God made a wounded soldier into a glorious saint, we too will come out as transformed and energized individuals out of this pandemic. Thank you again, dear Father, for helping us contemplate the essence of Ignatian spirituality. We will leave this webinar enriched with many personal insights. We can't help but feel that after the frontline COVID warriors, it is the teaching community which has had to bend backwards to adjust to this new normal. I express our sincere gratitude to the rector 
of St. Joseph's Indian institutions, Reverend Father Joseph Rodriguez, the management, the heads of various Jesuit institutions, and our principal, Reverend Father Rohan de Almeida, for all their support and guidance in this period of painful transition. A special word of thanks to our beloved principal, Father Rohan, for thoughtfully organizing the webinar at this opportune time as we prepare to celebrate the feast of our founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola. I would like to thank today's moderator, Ms. Sheila, Ms. Nirma D'Souza of St. Joseph's Indian High School, my fellow coordinators, Ms. Purnima and Ms. Shirley, and very specially the computer department of St. Joseph's School, CBSE, Ms. Rani and Ms. Sesha Swinney, for all the hard work they have put in to ensure the webinar was glitch-free and a pleasant experience to all. I thank all the participants from the various Jesuit institutions across the state for making this webinar a fruitful one. I finally thank and wish the best to every person associated with today's webinar in one way or the other. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Dear participants, you may now exit the webinar.